Lagastic Governor Babajide Somolu on Tuesday inaugurated members of the State Task Force on Human Trafficking to curb the menace of uh, human trafficking and irregular migration in this state. Speaking during the inauguration of the task force at the Lagos House in Keja, Governor Somolu urged all members of the task force to see their appointment as a call to service. The governor also charged members of the Lagos State Task Force on Human Trafficking to come up with brilliant ideas, innovations and policies that will assist the state government in curbing the menace. In her address, the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Okadonli, said the problem of human trafficking and irregular migration have become a great national concern, especially with the large number of Nigerians trapped in sexual and labor exploitation in various African and European countries, apart from the hundreds that continue to die in the Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean Sea. The Director General National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Julie Okadonli, joins us now. Glad to have you, uh, Dame Julie Okadonli. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Well, I, I hope that you can hear. Let, let me just start this way. Is this uh, the forming of the task force? Is it just a Lagos thing? Or are other states, do other states have such forces or you intend to get other states to replicate what Lagos has done? And what's the core mandate of the task force? All right, uh, it's looking like uh, the connection is not yet as it ought to be. So it's, it's, it's a terrible thing, uh, the question of trafficking, particularly for women and children that are the most vulnerable when these things occur. Mm -hmm. One thing is, how do you stop them from occurring? Uh, how, to sorry, how to prosecute the perpetrators of this dastardly act? And then... You know, uh, how to rehabilitate it. These are issues that are uh, uh, very poignant in this question of uh, human trafficking. Absolutely. And what's uh, very worrying to see is Nigeria being a transit source and destination country, the level of human trafficking that we're seeing across the country today is just getting more and more and more. A lot of people have often looked to Benin and Edo as the epicenter of human trafficking in Nigeria. But even just looking at the recent statistics that we're seeing out of Lagos that were announced yesterday when this task force were formed, you can see that this is a problem that we are facing all over the country and something needs to be done. But Andy, back over to you. I think we do have... Right, okay. Okadonli uh, back with us Dame now. Julie Okadonli, glad to know that you're back. I was just asking you there, by the way, uh, welcome once again to the program Newsday. I was just asking you, is this, this task force, the setting up of the task force, is it just a Lagos state thing or are there task forces in all the states or you intend to replicate such task force in all the states of the Federation and what's the core mandate of this task force? Yeah, right now we have task forces in about nine states. Um, I mean, um, or your state at the moment, um, getting ready to inaugurate the task force tomorrow and then proceeding to Ogun State. And the plan is to have task forces in all 36 states of the Federation. The idea is to have a more coordinated approach uh, between the state and the federal government in curbing human trafficking. Um, NATIP has always adopted... Um, the strategy of the whole of government and the whole of society, you know, we adopted this approach from time immemorial. We need the states to work closely with the federal government because the fight against human trafficking is not a fight that involves just the federal government. The states need to realize that they have a massive role to play in the fight against human trafficking because these victims all come from a, from a state, you know, for starters. And so the, when, 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 when the state takes hold of it as their project, it becomes a lot easier because when we're talking about awareness campaigns, the state task force is able to go into all the rural communities. They are able to identify the endemic communities and carry out awareness campaigns in the language that they understand. The state is also able to rehabilitate the indigents who are brought back to the various states where they come from after NAPTIP has profiled them, giving them some form of rehabilitation. Then the empowerment will now be shifted back to the state because they, the state government has a role to play. And also when it comes to prosecution, where there are um, information that will lead to the arrest of perpetrators within the state, it is easier 
to work, you know, with the state and NAPTI because the co-chair, the, co the chairman of the task force is the state's attorney general and um, commissioner for justice. And the chair, the co-chair is the zonal commander of NAPTI. All the law enforcement agencies are members. And we also have, you know, the faith-based organization, the CSO, the NGOs, all the relevant stakeholders are members of that task force. So it is easier to report cases of trafficking to the task force because everyone in the state knows who to go to and what to do in the events that there's a, that they suspect that trafficking is going on or trafficking is about to occur. So it just gives us a more coordinated approach in the fight against human trafficking between the state and the federal government. And this is great news. It's good to know that this is something that NAPTIP also plans on extending to all 36 states across the country because I was looking at the report that came out yesterday when you inaugurated the task force here in Lagos State and there were some worrying facts on there. The International Organization of Migration, for example, stating that there's been a 600% increase in the number of people arriving at Europe by sea and the, number, and the majority of them are coming from Nigeria. So would you attribute this solely to what we've experienced and the economic pains of the pandemic, etc., or what are the real reasons why there's been a 600% increase in the number of people arriving at Europe by sea, and the most of them being from here in Nigeria? Yeah, I'll tell you that uh, most of these cases are based on ignorance. Um, we need to work on the mindset of most of the youth, you know, who think that anything outside Nigeria is the best for them. But thankfully, most of them are beginning to realize that it's a big mistake because every day we are inundated with calls from all over the world asking the federal government to bring them back to Nigeria because they've come to realize that, you know, there's no place like home. The grass is not greener on the other side as they were made to believe. Most of these people are deceived, you know, into thinking that there are jobs waiting out there for them. And as a matter of fact, I don't like to talk about poverty because, yes, um, some of the root causes are poverty. But you find out that in these cases, most of them actually paid a lot of money to get themselves tra trafficked out of the country. So there's some element of greed. Um, there's some element of, you know, just ignorance, sheer ignorance. And, of course, deceit on the part of the fake agents who lure these innocent, um, vulnerable victims out of the country. All right, um, Dame, I, I would like to focus on the states with more prevalence in terms of trafficking because we just had today, or the news that came out today, that four people were nabbed in Uyo for trafficking offenses, so to speak. Which states are we seeing more prevalent? We know Lagos State might be one of them, but from your data, which states have more numbers in terms of child trafficking? I don't know if you can hear me. Well, it would not be proper to say this state has more or this state has more because we have different forms of human trafficking. So, you know, different states are, 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 are you know, notorious for different forms of trafficking. We have some states who are notorious for trafficking in uh, uh, domestic servitude. We have some for sexual exploitation and so on and so forth. So every state has its own, you know, uh, a, a peculiar problem, you know. And I'll say that almost all the states are endemic when it comes to human trafficking. I'm not going to pick any particular state and say the numbers of these are more. You know, it depends on what kind of trafficking is, you know, I mean, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, it's, that is more common within that particular state. But all, all I can tell you is that all the states are endemic when it comes to human trafficking in Nigeria. All right. How worrying, really, a trend is this evil. That's what I will call it. And then, if you can, paint a graphic picture of the psychological damage and trauma experienced by those so trafficked. Yeah, it's very worrisome in the sense that it causes so much traumatic trauma um, to the victims. You find out that when they return, most of them can hardly speak without, you know, crying when they try to relieve their ugly experiences. A lot of them are raped, you know, on a daily basis. A lot of them are made to work like 20 to 24 hours every day. They don't have any weekends. They don't have holidays. They are not allowed to make calls to their family members. You know, they, they, they work in slave-like conditions. And then most of them realize that, look, there's no place like home. I'm better off in Nigeria. You know, the, the, the conditions are so 
evil, so harrowing, so gruesome, you know. And um, it, it's not a place where anyone would want to find themselves in. Uh, and then we're hoping that with the setting up of the task forces, by the time the state governments begin to make uh, education free and compulsory, um, a lot of these people will be at school, you know, uh, rather than be on the streets and looking for ways to get out of, of, of their states or of Nigeria. Absolutely, ma'am. And I mean, there's something that you said. You said that you believe that there's elements of greed and ignorance that send people through these routes. But honestly, I mean, I just don't think anyone really chooses to opt and leave an environment, except that environment is far from conducive enough and they feel they have no choice. And like you said as well, a lot of people are lured under false pretenses. So I'd like to ask, does NAPTIP partner with other agencies abroad in countries like Italy, countries like Lebanon, where trafficking of persons, Nigerian persons, is becoming extremely prevalent and has been? Absolutely. We partner with almost all the countries that are endemic in human trafficking abroad. We partnered with, NAPT, um, with Italy, we partner with the Netherlands, the UK, US government. We've carried out even joint operations and joint uh, uh, investigations uh, uh, between countries, um, joint training sessions and so on and so forth. We partner with, in fact, everyone is a partner because it's a global problem. Um, it's not a Nigerian problem. It's a global problem. All over the world, there are elements of huge human trafficking, and it's something that we need to work with with each other um, on the global stage. All right, Dave. Um, briefly, has COVID-19 exacerbated this human trafficking, or has it slowed it down? Well, I would not. I don't want to think it has slowed it down because there's been a lot of online trafficking going on now. Um, rather than going in groups, rather than seeing people traveling together in groups, um, there's a lot of fake online adverts now going on, you know, uh, um, asking for job openings here and there, scholarships and all of that. And people are just finding their way out somehow, uh, probably through the borders and places like that. And it's going to even get worse uh, because with the COVID-19, a lot of lives have been lost, especially in the uh, uh, countries of destination and they will be looking to getting more of these irregular migrants come to fill up the spaces and to continue to do the various kinds of cheap labor that some of these countries are accustomed to doing and so we're going to be having a lot of online uh, uh, fake online adverts and that is why um, NAPTIP has gone online to alert the general public that you do not uh, uh, um, um, respond to adverts online for any form of job because it's likely going to be a case of human trafficking. All right. Before we let you go, very briefly, how do you ensure that those trafficked uh, do not are totally free and they don't get into a situation all over again where they are trafficked again? Well, that is where the states come in because when these girls and boys are are rescued and they are rehabilitated, giving psychosocial support and medical support, NATIF will now formally hand them over to the state task force so that the state government can take off from where we stopped. That is empowering them to ensure that they become useful citizens to their states and to Nigeria and they do not get re-trafficked again. Julia Cardonley, Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking Persons. Many thanks for joining us on Newsday today and enlightening us on your efforts to expand to all states.